Dude, that pisses me off. That was a lot. I bet you guys spent at least a half a day before this just doing it, and now we've got an additional half a day to correct yeah. what they did to us. Tonight I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean. Tonight I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean. We've got a jam-packed show for you today because we are going to be dispelling myths. Gonna make you nervous. Now this yard does need to be overseeded. So some people say you don't overseed sod. You always overseed sod. Is all sod is 100% sunny mix. And when you get it even in slight shade like this, it's gonna start to not come in as strong. So the best way to, is to overseed with a sun shade mixture, or if it's going in pure shade, shade, overseed with a shade mixture. So as this sod is withering away, the other seed will come in. Now you gotta seed really light, because if you do a real heavy a seeding, what will happen is that the, the new seed will begin to compete with the sod. And so then they all choke each other out. It's like a lose, like the ultimate lose-lose situation. We're also going to talk how some contractors cut corners and you may have one of those yards that it happened to you on, how to identify it and how to correct it. It's because my yard, they put it right on class five. Wait, they put sod on class five? I wasn't home when they did it. I wasn't happy about it. They all, I was just saying earlier in the video, contractors cheat. I told them too, I'm like, I don't want to load black dirt. Cause this is sand, class five. God, that would piss me off. So I'm still watering a lot. Right? We're gonna cover how to prep the subgrade and how to prep the finish grade and what the actual difference is between these two very critical elements in your yard. And we're also gonna talk about some of the mistakes that contractors can make when they're prepping the finish grade versus prepping the subgrade and how that can have long-term disastrous results for your yard. Okay, another one. I don't know if these are Japanese. These look like Japanese beetles. Does this look like a Japanese beetle larva to you? This is the second one I found in this batch. Yeah, I don't know what they are. I've seen a few of them too. Another bad thing that guys do is they will lay sod over existing turf and that will kill the sod. Wait a minute, what happened, Blaine? Well, we had all the black dirt down, and then the irrigation people came in, and they brought in a trencher when it was pouring rain, and trenched in new lines, and they wrecked all our grade. Mudded it up? And left it. Yeah, you can see this was all perfect. You know, I was wondering, yeah. Yeah, so this is... So earlier we had the subgrade done perfectly so we could just spread our black dirt in and have all of the elevation set so the sod would match up perfectly. But then the irrigation guys came in and well, let's just show you how things went from there. We had this real looking really sharp before. So this is from them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, cause I was like, Still where there. the heck did like this come from? Yeah, that's all from the trencher that, that, that sure, it went all the way up and this, this was all in. Yeah. Yeah, we had that all cut in nice so we could have yeah. laid sod. We could have uh, just came in, we had it all set, so it was just feather the soil in. Wow, okay. Oh well, I guess it happens. Yeah. And they put in new boxes and new lines back there. and that Did they put them at, at the right elevation? Well, we had the grade set perfect with the black dirt, and it looks okay. I mean, that box looks all right, so. Okay. We just gotta move some dirt around. Okay. All right, you guys, you can never tell anything by a camera, but We've got this entire yard pitched so that it runs straight down toward that boulder back there behind me. So everything will flow this way and that way because that's the lowest point of this yard. So this, what 
is Todd's gonna actually loosen up that soil and level it out using a hand rake. Now, a typical hardscape rake doesn't have that dedicated lip. You can see see that it's it's got it's different setup. It's not quite the same, but yeah, it's like those before you use this though to take down the mounds, like the higher mounds. Because that'll go through a higher mound. It'll rip through it better. It'll rip through it better than this. Oh yeah. Because that's so that's I meant use that for first and then get rid of all the mounds and then I can go through with this. Now a power rake on a tractor or a loader works great for doing this if you don't have a six thousand dollar attachment available that hand rake that he's using right there works just as well well not quite just as well it's a lot more work but it's this layer that we want to keep as loose as possible because we want the roots to have some nice a nice medium for themselves to be able to work their way into and if you've got hard clay subsoil it literally will pack as hard as concrete and make it difficult not impossible but difficult to um to let your your grass establish if you do have those conditions don't worry a lot of water goes a long way so what i'm actually referring to is you can still grow a lawn but it's going to take a lot more water and we're going to actually show you a trick how to fix that in case they did it to you because they did it to blaine this and is the, contractors probably do one it to of the most people. important steps to successful sodding or seeding is what you do right here now i've seen contractors like home builders that do lots of big projects cheat on this step because you got a day's worth of work just getting this step done it's very common for a home builder to skip out on this very critical step and they don't want to pay a contractor like myself to do it right and they'll throw sod down right on top of clay this may have happened to you your yard mate and the way to tell is if your yard gets burnt during a hot summer day pretty easily if that happens it means you don't have enough organic material underneath but don't worry you guys you can always spread black dirt over the top of your grass you just have to do it whisper thin that's the key I'm guessing this looked a lot better when you guys left than it does now, right? Perfect. Yeah. That's pretty sad. Yeah, considering I wrecked the whole thing, so. Dude, that pisses me off. It was a lot. I bet you guys spent at least a half a day before this just doing it, and now we've got an additional half a day to correct yeah. what they did to us. So we've already got the initial layer of black dirt laid down. This is actually just a top dressing to cover up the ruts and all of the other stuff that happened when the other contractor came in. But the way we're laying this down right now is the same way we laid down the first layer. Feather it out, hand rake it out so that this layer does not get compacted. That's the key component. This is the stage of the game where you got to try to get it as perfect as possible but without compacting it. And so you want to make sure that your subgrade, that was the brown soil earlier, is really super hyper smooth because that will give you consistent results with this final layer. The top layer, this top soil, needs to stay, stay a consistent depth and that de is determined by what you do with the subsoil because if you have this much topsoil on one side of the project and this much topsoil on the other side, what happens is the side that has this much topsoil is going to compress. And in a few years, your yard is gonna look wavy like the top of a pool. But if you have this much on one side and this much on the other side, as they compress, as they settle in, they settle evenly. So consistency with your topsoil layer is really, really important. I can't stress that enough. Okay, so sod comes with 
a certain amount of its own black dirt. Yep. But, but in reality, that's not enough to depend on solely for it to grow and have the best results. So you, are you agree or disagree, Blaine? Oh. Just because my yard, they put it right on class five. Wait, they put sod on class five? I wasn't home when they did it. I wasn't happy about it. They all, I was just saying earlier in the video, contractors cheat. Uh, I told them too, I'm like, I don't want a load of black dirt because this is sand, class five. God, that would piss me off. So up. I'm still watering a lot. Right. To try and get that built up. I, over, I put soil over the top every year. So you put soil, so now that the sod is down, I was just saying that earlier too. So after the sod was down, to compensate, you know, it's not the end of the world. No. You sprinkle, and it's not something that you can do once. No. You've got to. Two years, yeah. Every a couple times. Yeah, usually spring and fall. Spring and fall, a couple times a yeah. year, and you're going to have and years. It's build up. Yep, yep, years and years of doing it. Otherwise, the water is just, there's nothing to hold the water. It just goes right through. So like, Go, oh. Goes right through. God, oh. Yeah, yeah, oh. Okay, so now that we're putting these in, uh, I want to show these guys the joint spacing because we don't line them up like soldiers, right? So we do a full roll, half roll, full roll, half roll. So you can see how they lay these out. That's part of the critical success of uh, doing a job like this is getting your joint spacing right. Another thing, another bad thing that guys do is they will um, lay sod over existing turf and that will kill the sod. So what we do is we actually, this is how I do it. So when I know, I know exactly where that goes, we can cut that in right there. And, um, and you can see all the clean lines. So you can see how he's going. What did you use to make this clean line, you guys? You use the ASV? Where they didn't use the skid loader, they also used a flat nose shovel to carve out that straight yeah, to line. Yeah, cut that in. And then look at the elevation as well. So I always like to leave my sod a titch higher when we try to blend in. And a titch is not a real measurement, but use your common sense. The reason we say that is because this is actually going to settle in. <laughs> what are you laughing at now, Todd? Oh, nothing. Just a titch. Just a titch? So another thing that also helps out when we're doing sod is when we got multiple guys running, we like to get uh, one guy cutting in while uh, the other guys lay the field. Because the cut in takes just about as long as the rest of the process and some on some sites. What are you shaking your head for, Todd? It doesn't take that long. No, I do it. What do you use when you cut in? Yeah, but is there a certain knife? I mean, because we've used flat nose shovels to cut in, um, but your your standard typical <laughs> cardboard cutter will work great. Works awesome. Okay. Give you a demonstration. All right, so we got a piece right here. So it's already cut in. What I like to do just line it up. So you cut from the back side. Yep, cut from the back. And what I can do. And then you tuck it in. Yep. Put it to bed. There we go. There we go. That's how she's done. Now this yard does need to be overseeded. So some people say you don't overseed sod. Yes, you do. You always overseed sod. You don't overseed it heavy, but you overseed it because that helps fill in the joint spaces. Right down there, all of these spaces right here, throw a little seed in, that'll blend everything together. Also, another thing that we need to point out is all sod is 100% sunny mix. There is no, sod is not grown any other way. It's all sunny mix because it's grown in wide open fields where it's gotta be sun tolerant. To and when you get it even in slight shade like this, it's gonna start to not come in as strong. So the best way to compensate for that 
is to overseed with a sun shade mixture or if it's going in pure shade, overseed with a shade mixture. So as this sod is withering away, the other seed will come in. Now you gotta seed really light, really light, and you've gotta do it time and time and time again. Because if you do a real heavy uh, seeding, what will happen is that the, the new seed will begin to compete with the sod. And so then they all choke each other out. It's like a lose, like the ultimate lose-lose situation. You're right, Stan. Thanks, Blaine. I got another word of wisdom for you, Stan. What's that, Blaine? Shut up and start throwing some sod. You've been down this road for far too long He left your love behind But still you keep on falling back Where are we going with this one, you guys? Are we starting to... Well, that's, that's a lesson from Todd. What? I'm starting this way. I want to start this way. Come back. Oh. We're going to land and lock ourselves in. Okay. So I mean, we're we're gonna have next, pal next pallet's gonna have to be on the other side. We're gonna have to walk them all over here. Oh, okay. Well, there's th no big deal, but there's three of us. So what Blaine is actually talking about is setting out your pattern initially, so you don't have to cross back over your work zone. And it's the same as painting yourself into a corner or doing tile work. It's just a matter of pre-planning. So where you exit is the closest place to where you can actually set up your pallets of sod. I always like to flip all of my corners back because man, it's easy to lose track. Yes. All right, Blaine, we got a sprinkler head right here. Yeah, let's put some there. Go down. There Boom, go. now we know right where, right where the sprinkler heads go. Mary, I'm shooting a video on how to sod a yard. I hope you don't mind. Okay, so there's some certain things that you've got to do to keep your sod alive now that it's installed. You've got good base in, but the most important thing is watering it and checking to make sure that the watering is actually accurate or adequate, I should say, for, because a lot of times people will surface water, but they're not watering the subsoil. So, so let me actually show you what I'm talking about. So what you'll do is after you're done watering, you'll come out and you'll flip over a corner like this, okay? And what you wanna see is that ground moist. I see. Not mud, but just moist, like this. You can see how this is nice and moist. This is a little bit dry right here, mm -hmm. but this is nice and moist. This is perfect. And what you'll see is you see these little teeny tiny white roots yeah. right there. Yeah. You want to see those like spider webs all over. Once you once you get to that point, then you know your roots starting to adhere to the subsoil. Okay, couple things to be careful of, and I want to show you. Japanese beetles are everywhere now. The Japanese beetle larva. So one of the worst things to a new lawn are these guys right here, Mary. Mm -hmm. Japanese beetle. Now this one I don't think is a Japanese beetle larva, but they they lay eggs and then they grow up and they get pretty big like this and these guys will cruise underneath your sod and all they do is eat at those little tiny white roots that we were talking about right and so you'll find dead spots all over and that means you've got to treat it now you can get treatment for these guys at a number of different places and you want to try to identify the growth stage that they're in if you notice that happening that's because these guys have invaded and they love to, to go after new sod i mean it's just part of their mo that's a bummer it is it really sucks okay so we uh you know well you can see all the flags so the irrigation yep. is put in here so i'm just going to water it twice a day yep yeah it, five minutes twice a day it doesn't matter how often you water it it's to make sure that it gets underneath it that's the, that's more important than how often you water i mean twice a day is a good rule of thumb but if it's a scorcher out you may need to water more often Look at, there's another one. I don't know if these are Japanese. These look like Japanese beetles. Does this look like a Japanese beetle larva to you? This is the second one I found in this batch. Yeah, I don't know what they are. I've seen a few of them too. Oh, look at, here's another one. 
they're all over. I think these are it. Are they? I think so. I mean, if they're they not it, the roots are they, they, yeah, good. they eat the roots. I mean, and they're just inf they're infestation levels. Yeah. I've seen a few of them. Golly, that's the third one I found, and <laughs> in just a few minutes. Oh, you grab the short run there, and I'll grab this one. So that means there's eggs in these here. Rolls of sod. But that's not to be alarmist. If there wasn't eggs in it, there would be within a couple days. Because the Twin Cities area at least is infested with Japanese beetles. And so they're on the trees and they're on everything. So they come in really fast. So next I want to hear from you guys. What tips and tricks do you use when you're laying sod down? Now our next video in this series is all about seeding. We're going to take this same job site that we sodded the backyard and we're going to seed the front yard. This was a strategy that we do offer to our customers as a way of helping them save money. We identify high priority areas and sod those. Lower priority areas get seeded. So we're going to walk you through that process next. And as always, you guys, do me a favor and check out these other two videos that I put up here right for you guys. God bless you guys. Go get them and let me know some of your sodding tips and tricks in the comments down below.